This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi, I'm Uriah from CMD Ardex. Today we're going to do a very special unboxing of the Magic Commander 2013 product. Today we have Nature of the Beast. So this is the Nyadek Nature of the Beast. The main commander here is Merith, Will of the Wild. Uh, it's a 0, zero for Naya colors. Enters the battlefield with number of counters equal to the mana spent to cast it. And we get some abilities to remove the counters to get either counters on a creature or X damage or a green elemental creature with XX equal to the converted mana cost or the mana spent. The other commanders in this deck are Gahiji Honored One, 4-4 four, four for 5 mana. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker an opponent controls, that creature gets plus 2 plus 0 to the end of turn, so it encourages not attacking you. We also have an oversized version of Mael of the Anima, which puts creatures with converted mana cost fiber greater into play when you pay 6. So let's get into the deck here. Looks like we have some more learn how to play instructional information. So again, we have Merith, a smaller version of that. Uh, Glazing Great Hearts, uh, the lamb comes into play, gain two life. A lot of beasts in this deck. Uh, Crows and Warchief, beasts cost one less to cast, and you can regenerate a beast. Here is Myel again, which puts uh, big guys into play. Drum Hunter also cares about creatures with power five or greater, and adds mana. Mold Shambler, beast comes into play, can destroy a non-token permanent, or non-creature permanent, I should say, if it was kicked. We have a Terra Ravager, which is also in the Power Hungry deck. It's an 0-4 on 4. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus O until the end of turn. Where X is the number of lands the any player controls. And again, on turn 4 or 5, it's going to be at least probably a 4 or 5, as long as your opponents aren't missing those land drops. Ravenous Bailoth is a reprint. This is the art that was printed, I believe, on the Judge Foil Ravenous Bailoth. It's a 4-4 four, four on 4, Sacrifice of Beast, gain 4 life. Spellbreaker Behemoth, a reprint here as well, a 5-5 five, five on 4, can't be countered, and other creatures with power 5 or greater can't be countered. This is a great creature for commander, especially if you see a lot of blue in your group. Here's a smaller version of uh, Gehiji, the Honored One. We have Rate Claw Gargantuan, target creature with 5 or power greater gains first strike until the end of turn. That's on 5 mana. Uh, Spite Bell is an elemental, whenever we use Battlefield, 6 damage, and you can evoke it for 3. Deadwood Tree Folk is a great reprint. It was originally from the Time Spiral block. It's a great card for Commander. It's a 3 6 on 6 with vanishing counters of 3, but whenever it enters or leaves the battlefield, return another target creature from your hand or to your hand from the graveyard. Crater Hellion, originally from the Urza block, a 6 6 4 6 with an echo of 6, enters the battlefield, deal 4 damage to each other creature, so a double pyroclasm. This might leave it as the only creature left on the board. There is a fight sub theme in this deck. So we have Magus of the Arena, a 5 5 on 6, not too shabby itself, that can make other creatures you control fight uh, creatures your opponents control. Bailoth Woodcrasher, uh, Landfall plus 4 plus 4, and Trample to the end of turn. Rampaging Bailoth, another Landfall creature, uh, 6 6 on 6, that gives you 4 4 for each land, which is great. And there is a lot of land in this deck, so you're definitely going to be hitting these land drops and getting the uh, landfalls pretty easily. Valley Rana Red is 6-3, vanilla, but you can force or mountain cycle it, and that's on 6 mana if you want to hard cast it. Avengers Zendikar, one of the best creatures for Commander, especially when you hit a lot of land drops. So 5-5 five, five on 7, uh, puts a bunch of plants into play and makes them bigger with those landfall. Uh, you're probably very familiar with Avengers Zendikar if you're familiar with the Commander format. Crows and Tusker is almost always going to be cycled because it's a great ability to search for a basic land and then also get a card. Uh, it'll be very unusual if this actually comes into play as a creature, but maybe from my the Anima, it might. We have a reprint of Archangel, a 5-5 Flying Vigilance on 7. Uh, this is the original art from Quentin Hoover. 
So that looks great there. The old art, I like the old art a lot. I think it's really good. Eternal Dragon is a reprint originally from Scourge. This is new art, though. This is the Pro Tour promotional foil art. Uh, you can plane cycle this for two, return it to your hand during the upkeep, and then plane cycle it again. Uh, it's a great card advantage engine. We have Naya's Soul Beast. It's a lot of mana. It's eight. It's a two grain six trampler. When it comes into play, each player reveals the top card of his or her library, and then Naya's Soul Beast gets plus one, plus one counters equal to the total X converted mana cost. This might be Feast and Famine. Uh, you might hit a lot of big counters, especially in a deck like this with very high mana costs, or everyone can hit a land and you have a zero, zero for eight mana that instantly dies. We see Soul Ring, which was reprinted in all five of the decks. As well as Swift Foot Boots, this is uh, taking the slot of Lightning Greaves from Commander 2011. We have Druidic Satchel, which gives us pretty much card advantage uh, from cards on top of our library, whether it's a creature or a land into the battlefield, or even some life. Uh, it's a great way to get that incremental advantage. Behemoth Sledge, going to make your guys bigger, lifelink and trample. Sirius Sundial, with a deck that is so many land, I believe 42 total in this deck, you're going to hit your landfall quite often, like I said, and then using the ability to draw a card if you pay 2 mana is going to be great. Uh, this deck could see itself running out of gas, so see your sundial is awesome. As well as Tower of Fortunes, pay 8, tap it, draw 4 cards. That's amazing. Dark Steel Mutation is one of the new cards from the set. Enchanted Creature is an 0-1 insect artifact creature with Indestructible. It loses all other abilities and all other creature types, and that's just for 2 mana there, so you can nerf your opponent's biggest creature for just 2. We see the Curses originally printed in Innistrad. They brought them back here for Commander 2013. Uh, this is a red aura curse. Whenever a player attacks the enchanted player with one or more creatures, the attacking player may discard a card. If they do, they draw a card, which is red's ability for looting. So we see that here. Uh, War Cadence, originally from Arcadian Masks, is an enchantment. For one red and X, when it's in play this turn, creatures can't block unless they're player unless their controller pays X for each blocking creature he or she controls. So even just a small amount of mana to this, like two or three, could really cause issues there for your opponents. Curse of the Forsaken, another new curse that was printed here in the set. For one white and two enchanted player, whenever a creature attacks enchanted player, its controller may gain a life. Unless you have a deck that really cares about life gain, uh, this may not be the most powerful curse in there. Uh, it might be one that might see uh, getting cut rather quickly. We also have a new curse in Curse of Predation, uh, Enchant Player, and then whenever a creature attacks Enchanted Player, put a plus one plus one counter on it. That's for one green and two. We have Fires of Yavimaya. Uh, this is originally an uh, invasion block as seen. One or two reprints since. Uh, this is new art for Fires of Yavimaya though, so if you like the new art, maybe choose this one. Creatures you control have haste, and then sacrifice that target creature gets plus two plus two until the end of turn. Where the Ancients Tread, this was in the Zendikar block, I believe. Uh, this is going to give a, whenever a creature with power 5 or greater enters the battlefield, uh, it can deal 5 damage to target creature or player. So whenever your big guys come in, they deal more damage, and you can see a lot of damage go quickly. Uh, you have so many high power creatures in this deck. Witch Hunt, it's a new card for Magic 2013 for Commander. Uh, 1 red, 4 enchantment, players can't gain life. During your upkeep, it deals 4 damage to you, and then it goes to an opponent at random at the uh, end step. Now, if you have a Zedru deck, you can pass this along and never take the damage, and then draw those cards during the upkeep, so that's great. Mystic Barrier, also a new, the new card. It's an enchantment for 5 mana. When it enters the battlefield, choose left or right, and you can also change that during the upkeep, left or right, which is great. And then players can only attack in the chosen direction. Uh, so it can go ahead and maybe keep someone that's on your left or right hand side off of your back if they have a lot of creatures, which is very nice. We also have Warstorm Surge. This is sort of the fixed propaganda. Uh, it only affects creatures that come into play under your control, and it deals damage equal to its power to creature or player. That's on six mana. Spawning Grounds is a new card. It's an enchantment for eight total mana. Enchant a land, tap, put a 5-5 five, five green beast creature token with trample onto the battlefield. Uh, really good with where the ancients tread, you know, tap, get a 5-5, five, five, deal 5 damage. Boros Charm for its flexibility for 1 red and 1 white. Instant, deal 4 damage to creature or to a player, or permanents you control gain indestructible, which is probably its best uh, ability uh, for the 3. 
or target creature gains double strike within turn, pretty good as well. But making all your guys indestructible if someone tries to uh, wrath the board, that's awesome. Sprouting Vines is going to let you get a bunch of lands in your hand, especially if you can hit it for a pretty high storm count. We have Naya Charm, just more flexibility to uh, deal 3 damage to each uh, creature, or its target creature, return card from a graveyard owner's hand, or tap all creatures target opponent controls. If you got a lot of dudes, tap down your opponents, and then swing for the win. Slice and Twain, destroy target artifact or enchantment, draw a card. Street Spasm, uh, we have X damage target creature without flying, overload, so this can get rid of a lot of your opponent's creatures, which is awesome. We have Restore, which is also in the Power Hungry deck. Put a target land from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Again, it's any land in any graveyard and comes into play untapped, which is awesome. Again, this might see some legacy play. Hall Breach for one green, one red. Sorcery, destroy an enchantment or an artifact or both. Cultivate, it's awesome. Gets you land in your hand and in play. Fiery Justice, this is new art. I believe was uh, the cube art. And then for Naya Colors, deal 5 damage, divide as you choose, and uh, target opponent gains 5 life. From the Ashes is a new card, sort of a Ruination reprint. It's a take on Ruination. It destroys all non-basic lands like Ruination, but for each land destroyed this way, its controller can get an untapped basic from their library into play. So it may hinder someone that has a lot of non-basics in their land in their deck and maybe don't have any basics at all. Um, but it's not going to hurt them as much as a Ruination would, where they get nothing out of it in the end. Tempt with a Discovery is a new Tempt card with Tempting Offer. For one green three, it's a sorcery. Search your library for any land card and put it on the battlefield, and that does not say tap. So this is a great card to get any land out of your deck. If your opponents decide they want to get any land as well, you can go ahead and get a second, third, or even fourth land. Uh, this is going to be a very powerful card in Commander. We have Harmonize with the Garrick versus Liliana art. Uh, four mana, draw three cards. Here we have Wrath of God. Maybe you cast that Boros Charm, save all your dudes, and kill everyone else's creatures. One Dozen Eyes is going to give us some flexibility for a token generator. Slice and Dice, a reprint from Onslaught block. Uh, you can either go ahead and hard cast it for four damage to each creature, or cycle it for one damage to each creature, and then draw a card. Reign of Thorns was from the Innistrad block. Uh, some great flexibility here with destroying an artifact, an enchantment, or a land, or all three. Fireball, just a big X spell, either to a creature or to the head, or to multiple creatures. We have Savage Twister, also doing X damage to each creature. Uh, it's fitting the theme of destroying the creatures that maybe are smaller and getting in there with your big guys. We go on to the land base now. We have some Red, white, mana fixing in Boros Garrison and the Guild Gate. Uh, we do have the reprint of Command Tower, which is probably the best mana fixing card for Commander, especially because it's printed directly for Commander. The land base in this is really nice. A lot of rare lands like Contested Cliffs, which only saw a print in Onslaught Block. Uh, target Beast you control fights the target creature and opponent controls for one red, one green, and tap it. Uh, initially didn't have the word fight, but it has been errated to say fight. We have Drifting Meadow with new art, some more fix in Evolving Wilds, Cycling Lands, Forgotten Cave. Homeward Path is another great land. Tap at each player gains control of all creatures he or she controls. Uh, if you have those creatures uh, out there being stolen by bribery or control magic, uh, Homeward Path is a really great card. I'm glad to see they reprinted this one. Jungle Shrine for fixing. Kalini Garden gives us a 0-1 token and gives us some green mana. Moss Wart Bridge. If you have creatures with power 10 or greater, you can play the card under it for free, uh, which should not be too difficult in this deck to get the 10 power. Some more fixing, a scry land. Opal Palace is a new land that was printed in Magic Commander 2013. You can tap at a colorless to your mana pool, or tap colorless and tap it. Add one mana of your commander's color identity. If it was spent to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of X or plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. So the more times you kill Mike Legend, the bigger it's coming back each time. It's a great new card. Should see a lot of play. Uh, Rupture Spire for mana fixing. More cycling lands. Some white green fix. Another cycler. And another cycler. Temple of False God is in each deck. Uh, two mana for five lands once you have it in play is pretty good. 
cycling, uh, making 1-1 one, one green sapperlings. You want to make a lot of creatures in this deck. Uh, that's going to be great. We have a vivid land, and then it looks like we just have some basics. Thanks for watching this unboxing of the Magic Commander 2013 product. Please subscribe and favorite.